What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We are about to see some activity going on across the Atlantic Ocean. We've been continuing to monitor several model runs for you guys, and we're going to go ahead and show you some that kind of you need to see right here. So here's what we have going on right here. This is the Icon run. We're going to show this and the European uh, run for you guys as well. Here is this run right here. This is the 12Z Icon run as of right now. The 12Z Icon run has a tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa on Saturday and starting to organize and develop from there. It starts organizing from the get-go and strengthens down up to a potential tropical storm as it gets through the main development region. I've been looking at a lot of these scenarios, even the European, uh, uh, sorry, the European operational is in agreement with that. So here, here's what we have with the European starts organizing and developing and then starts potentially strengthening up to a tropical storm as it gets closer to the Antilles over here. So this is something I've been continuing to monitor for several days right here. And the reason I've been monitoring this is because the European charts forecast, the, the mean tropical cyclone strike probabilities have continued to increase. Here's where we were yesterday. Yesterday, we were up to about a 50, uh, around 50% area in one small spot across the Atlantic. Now, if we go to today, it's now dramatically increased. That 50 to 60% uh, chance area expanded greatly, and now we have a 60 to 70% chance across parts of the Atlantic right here. And this is for the second week, sorry, this is for the third week of August right here. So that's coming up in a few days. So this is something I've continued to monitor uh, going forward. So we have this going on right here. We have the European calling for a potential tropical storm. We have the Icon calling for a potential tropical storm. The latest from the CMC right here, the CMC, the Canadian model right here, has potentially something developing. However, it's not exactly registering as much as it was before. So the CMC has been kind of fluctuating on that. The Icon, the Euro have been continuing to ramp up in intensity going forward. So this is something we need to monitor, monitor right here. And an, an, another cautionary tale that we need to take these things with a grain of salt, but still we need to pay attention to them. The reason we need to pay attention to them is because of this. The biggest reason we need to pay attention to it is the global sea temperatures. The global sea temperatures across the main development region are continuing to increase. We're seeing 28 plus degrees Celsius waters across the Atlantic Ocean right here. And 80, 28 degrees Celsius, for those of you who live in the United States, around 82 degrees Fahrenheit, which is more than enough for hurricane development here, folks. We have 30 plus degrees Celsius waters in the Gulf of Mexico, in the Caribbean Sea, in parts of, uh, the, parts of the Atlantic Basin over here, parts of the Caribbean, and parts of the main development region, which is, which is something you absolutely do not want to see. We're at the point where we're past ahead of schedule this is house money and depending on how warm these waters get will depend on how uh, how much fuel and how much capital these tropical systems have to work with another thing we need to look at right here is the ocean heat content and this has been something that has been absolutely alarming to me if especially across the caribbean right here we are see we're seeing a massive area of over 175 ohc and I wouldn't be surprised if there are some areas of over 200 OHC owing to how expansive all this is. Now, David Schlotthauer posted a tweet last night talking about this. Wow, I hate really seeing portions of the Gulf of Mexico reach about 33.3 to 34 Celsius a sea surface temperatures right off the coast of Cape Coral. Not only that, but they're only 0.1 to 0.2 degrees shy of 34 degrees Celsius. 34 degrees Celsius, for those of you who do not know, is 93 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, Pat's Path Predictor, which is me, I alerted David to this last night, that the OHC may be breaching 200 kilojoules per uh, centimeter squared in the northwestern Caribbean, which is likely breaking records. I don't like causing fear-mongering or anything like that, but I am very concerned about what late August into September might bring. Take a full look at the images below. So this is what we have right here. And this is actually the sea surface temperatures anomalies we've been seeing right here. In some areas, we are seeing over 4 degrees Celsius above average. That's something you absolutely do not want to see. And this is the particular reason why El Nino isn't really doing anything to this hurricane season. Because the uh, sea surface temperature anomalies are so high in the Atlantic, 
it's obliterating whatever effect El Nino has. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the wind shear going into this. The wind shear is continuing to fluctuate off and on, off and on across the main development region. The Gulf of Mexico is seeing more wind shear as of now. The Caribbean Sea is starting to see a huge reduction of it so far. But this is something we need to monitor going forward. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the shear and moisture forecast from the European. The shear and the moisture forecast. Here's what we have going on. This is by Saturday right here. The shear clears out considerably across much of the Atlantic Ocean right here. So if anything wants to develop, and if we t take it by shear, it definitely could. However, it's, there is still quite a bit of dry air across much of the Atlantic Ocean right now. So that's what's really stopping much from developing for now. However, two thing, there's two things I'm noticing. One, the Sahara dust is far less expansive than it was earlier this month in late into July. That's what's the first thing I'm noticing. And two... All these tropical waves that are coming off the coast of Africa are actually starting to moisten much of the atmosphere. We're starting to see uh, more moisture in the Caribbean, more moisture in the Atlantic, more moisture in the main development region. And that down the road is going to enhance your, uh, your, uh, your development right here. So here's what we have going on into about seven days out. The shear continues to fluctuate off and on, off and on. This tropical wave that potentially could develop, it could have some problems with shear down the road. However, for now, uh, right here, at least seven days out, it shouldn't have too many issues until we got to about 10 days out where it's surrounded by shear. But I think by that point, it has less to do with the shear and more to do with the fact that, that the winds are starting to increase at that point. Definitely something we need to monitor. And if we cross check this with the moisture component to all this, the moisture, like uh, with this uh, system right here, it is going to be battling some dry air. However, it's not going to be nearly as much as what we would have seen in July or even June. So it definitely has a bigger chance as the, those humidity values do start to increase. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the European GFS and Canadian ensembles right here. The European ensembles continue to be quite aggressive right here, showing a lot of scenarios by about 204 hours out, calling for tropical storm to hurricane strength systems right here. And it's all from these tropical waves right here. Keep in mind, this is 10 days out, still unreliable. Just take it with a grain of salt. But considering the amount of ensembles I've been seeing with these scenarios, it's definitely something we absolutely need to pay attention to, especially as we get into the third week of August. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the GFS ensembles very quickly. The GFS ensembles, they're not as aggressive as the European. However, they are starting to show some potential signs of organization and development going forward. So not as many scenarios as the European. The GFS, surprisingly enough, has been pretty conservative with all this. However, that doesn't mean it's going to be conservative uh, forever, and we'll have to monitor this going forward. The Canadian uh, models right here, the Canadian is kind of split down the middle, essentially. They are calling for some potential de tropical development. However, there's not very many scenarios, and the scenarios that are presenting, they're showing potentially tropical storm development for now. So the Europeans mainly be the be mainly the one that's driving this. Same with the icon as well. So this is something we absolutely need to continue monitoring going forward. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. If you want to come hang out with us at Storms United and see behind the scenes how we make these videos, feel free to join the Discord server. Link is right over there. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.